Power Query has an awesome feature that lets us combine all of the Excel workbooks together in a folder and create one table containing all of that data. However, during the process, it only lets us select one worksheet name. So what happens if we have workbooks where the worksheets contain different names or if we have workbooks where there's multiple worksheets that we want to combine? In that situation, Power Query's default behavior doesn't give us what we want. But in this video, we're gonna find out how we can get around it to combine anything we like from any of those workbooks. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start by reminding ourselves how to combine all the files from a folder. I have a folder here and it contains three workbooks, file one, file two, and file three. And each of those workbooks contains a worksheet called sheet one. And it's that data that we want to combine. So to combine this into Excel, we come back to our workbook, we go to data, get data from file, and then from folder. We then navigate to the location and we can select the folder that contains all of the files we want to combine. We then click open. Power Query now gives us a preview of the files in that folder. We always want to click transform data. This now loads the Power Query interface and we have each of our workbooks listed. To combine each of these workbooks, all we need to do is to click the combine files icon. And this is where the problem begins because it lists out each of the worksheets available. And we want to select a specific worksheet such as sheet one. So we can select that. It shows a preview of sheet one and we then click OK. Power Query creates all of the helper queries that we need for this scenario. And it combines all of those queries together into a single table. Here you can see we have the data from file one, file two, and file three. But now we have our first issue. What if we add a workbook into our folder that doesn't contain a sheet one? What if that workbook contains a sheet two? In Power Query, if we refresh our preview, you'll notice that that workbook now results in an error. To resolve this, we go to the transform sample file and let's look through the steps. We have our source step and then we have our navigation step. When we look in the M code, we can see that we're starting with the source step. Then we are filtering our source so that it only contains items called sheet one and the kind is also sheet. Now we know that our sheet is called sheet two. So if we remove the filter that only refers to sheet one, this will then combine our data correctly. So I will remove item equals sheet one. When we commit that, it doesn't cause any errors. And when we come back to our main query, we now have our data combined correctly. We no longer have any errors. However, what happens if we add another workbook to that folder? And that workbook contains two worksheets. The first one is called sheet three, but we also have another sheet. And that sheet contains data that we don't want to combine. In this scenario, when we refresh our query, that file now results in an error. So let's head back to our transform sample file and let's edit our M code once more. And we want to edit our navigation step. The truth is that if we use this type of field access, where we enter a filter inside square brackets, inside curly brackets, it will only ever return the correct result if it has a single result returned. In workbook number five, there are two worksheets. However, we know for each of our workbooks that the worksheet that we want to combine is in the first position. Therefore, we can reference the worksheet by its position. Instead of filtering for where the kind equals sheet, we're going to explicitly reference the first worksheet. Now, Power Query is zero based, so the first worksheet is always zero. When we commit that, it doesn't create any errors. And when we go to our combined data, we can now see that file number five is combined together with our other worksheets. But we're not finished there. What happens if somebody adds a file to our folder that contains three worksheets that we want to combine? We can no longer just select that first worksheet. If I come back to Power Query and refresh our data, 
it only contains the data from sheet four. We also want to combine sheet five and sheet six. Let's head back to our transform sample file and let's select the navigation step once more. In the M code, we are using our source step and we are explicitly referencing the first row. And then we are referencing the data column. This works where our sample file only contains a single sheet. But when we get to workbook number six, it contains multiple sheets. So what we need to do is to combine those sheets together. To do that, we're going to edit our M code and we're going to use the table dot combine function. For this, we need a list of tables. We have this in our source step and in our data column. When we commit that, we initially don't get any errors. However, when we come back to our combined workbook, you can see that we have the worksheets from file five and file six that we don't want to import. And we also have the header row for two of the worksheets from file six. So let's head back to our transform sample file and edit our query. In our scenario, all of the sheets that we want to combine start with the word sheet. Therefore, I'll come to the name column, click on the filter, text filter begins with, we want to insert this step and we want to make sure that those sheets begin with the word sheet. We can then click OK. So this will remove any worksheets that don't start with that text. Next, we'll come to the promoted header step. You'll notice that currently we have the name item, units and value in our header row. But because we used table.combine in a previous step, for any additional worksheets, that header row would still be inside the data. So we are going to filter on our item column. And we're going to use text filters does not equal. And we want that to not equal the value of item. And then we can click OK. Let's now head back to our combined data. And there you go. We now have the data from all six of those files combined together. And that is how we can take the standard combined files method and make it work for when we have worksheets of different names, worksheets of different names, but in the same position. And also when we have multiple worksheets in workbooks, no matter our scenario, we can combine the relevant items together. Now, if you like this video, you are going to love our Excel Academy. That's the place where we teach everything you need to save huge amounts of time. So you can spend less time at work and more time doing what you love. Just head on over to excelthegrid.com and check it out. And once you've done that, why not take a look at this video next? It contains lots more awesome power query techniques. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.